All right. Welcome everyone for another orientation session from IT Learn, which is part of a JPAC program, which stands for Job Placement and Certified Training. And this specific training that we're talking about is the ENIOT Certified Developer Training. So what that means is you will get a lot of exposure to how we built this application and know the nitty gritties, the minute things that we've done at a code level to build this framework. So let me again give you a history of how ENIOT was built. We started sometime in August of 2016 as a training program and we went about building what we call as a Selenium live training and project. So as part of that specific program, we went about saying, hey, we've done this uh, training program for many, many days where we built a data driven, keyword driven, hybrid or a page object model kind of frameworks. Why don't we do one training program where we combine everything into that? And that's how we went about building this application called Anyot. Now, I've been talking about Anyot for a long time. So do you guys know what it primarily stands for? There are two abbreviations, uh, but primarily, do you know what it could stand for? Audience? Okay, I've got a few responses. Any automation, that's correct. So any art is what? It could be any automation. Like, you know, automate any web-based app. Now, that's a steep task team. To Just to say that we can automate anything is a steep task. But at the same time, unless we try and push ourselves to say that, Let's push this tool to the best of what we can do. That is the intent. All right. How do we go forward totally towards that? It can also be any automation application under test. So AUT could be for automation or it could be for any application under test. Or finally, it could be automate any application under test that's how I would finally call it as and team this is like a startup a very very uh, you know young idea that kind of crept into becoming a platform slowly and anyot.com has started with a simple idea that how can we use selenium specifically web driver along with the power of java and create an automation framework that combines data driven framework keyword driven framework page object model all into one hybrid platform we wanted to create something that will be fast easy and powerful at the same time when I say fast, it is not only to run tests, but also to create automation tests. When I say easy, what I intend to say is it should be easy for the end user to be using it. Who's going to be the end user? They're test engineers, QA engineers, automation testers or engineers. It could be developers. It could be, um, you know, the UAT team. It could be even this end business users. How is it easy for them to do? Now, if we talk about Selenium, WebDriver and Java, a very small percentage of this specific community has a hands-on expertise on it. And it would not be easy for them to try and start automating an application, any application which is web-based using these technologies. Not easy, but at the same time, IT Elan's core focus has been in and around Selenium, WebDriver, Java, automation tools. And we made the scripting part easy, the coding part easy, 
and also how we build frameworks which the industry requires. That's been the focus. So we wanted it to be easy for the multiple roles that any testing practice requires. So anyone in this, it could also be the BS, business analysts, who want to be able to play a role. And we said, hey, let's build this. So it should be easy, it should be fast executing, and it should be fast building a test automation suite. And it should be powerful. When we said powerful, it should have all the capabilities that Selenium and Java bring to the table. Be it cross-browser testing, uh, be it parallel test runs, be it uh, grid-based remote testing, and all those features. So we started in August of 2016 with about 50 participants in it. And we continued with 15 core team members who volunteered to build this application. And we are still progressing to build it. I would say as we stand today, we are about 80 to 85% done in terms of the core framework in your team am i right in putting this kind of a percentage at least for our initial beta version to come out and to this to make things even more amazing we created a web ui or rather creating and i would say we're about 60 percent there now so what we did is any art will become, like I mentioned earlier also, it is primarily going to be an automation testing framework. So we will have our core test where we put everything into anyot.com, which is the web-based UI. And this knows how to talk with Selenium web driver and how to pass the instructions. A user is sending commands and interacting with any yacht. And the Selenium web driver, in turn, is talking to the application under test. So we want a user to be able to write what are the test suites, test cases, and so on out here. That is very simple English-like commands. And then, the commands are sent to Selenium web driver. This is where the Enyot core team has been developing this framework. We are about 80% done here. And this Selenium web driver is talking to the application under test. And we are about 60% done with the web application. So to be an Enyot certified tester to begin with, you need to know how Enyot.com works, how the template looks how the main core Excel, which is the intermediate communicator right now. And do note, we will move to something much more efficient, uh, much more uh, programming based, like a database or an XML uh, in the future. But as of now, we kept it simple at an Excel level. It is easy for people to start learning. So this was any odd certified tester, if you know the above. Now, when it comes to, where's the color? When it comes to being an Enyot certified developer, of course, you need to know how the application works at UI level, but more importantly, how we did the entire development on Selenium WebDriver and Java. That is what the focus of this specific training will be. All right. Any questions before I move forward? Is it cloud-based? Uh, good question. So anyot.com as an application is cloud-based. The execution that happens on the application on a test happens on the local machine as of now for the current version. The execution does not happen. So there, there is something that the end user must install as a package on their local machine for these tests to be working. Did I answer your question? So it is partially cloud-based. So just to take that further, if I show you the right now live site, anyon.com, it talks exactly the same thing that I mentioned in a brief way. We talk about how we want to test it with ease. 
and test it with a lot of speed and how we combining the power of Selenium and Java to create this framework called Inyot. And what does Inyot features have that make automation testing easy and fast? So we spoke, spoke about Selenium with Java. We spoke about the combination of uh, different frameworks as a hybrid framework. Uh, I do mention this as an idiot friendly user experience because when we don't know something, we are absolutely, you know, beginner at it. And I call myself as an idiot when it comes to learning new things. And that term makes me a good learner. So this is helping people even with very minimal guidance, how they can start using this application. And at the end, how we can develop amazing reports that talk about how the test executions happened. Do I make sense what I'm saying? Can I hear a hi, hello, yes, no from the user community who's attending right now as to, is it clear what I'm trying to convey as a message, everyone? Can I hear a yes from everyone, please? All right, amazing. Or a no, saying that I'm confused. I'm trying to keep the context very simple so you know what we're trying to do here. Great, thank you so much, team. Now, this specific framework, like I said, is part of a complete training program, what we call as JPACT. So JPACT is Job Placement and Certified Training. So while we are training the JPACT participants across manual testing all the way to automation testing, we are also speaking about how they could become an NEOT certified tester and an NEOT certified developer. And this should have a value when you go into the market. Now, are we recognized uh, by the industry as NEOT or our certification is recognized? No, not at all, not yet. Then how would you say to an interviewer that, hey, I'm NEOT certified tester or developer, what value would it carry? Uh, on the face of it, not much. But then when the question comes as to what is NEOT, and you explain to them that this is what the framework is built and it is an open source framework free for all to use and you have mastered on it. So automatically the focus goes saying that you know all of these pretty well. And then the questions would become more like a discussion and the interview would get more interactive. And that is what we're trying to do team. We're trying to build your core capability in mastering this platform. So once you know these specific topics, learning any art to be a certified tester or a developer is not going to be tough at all. All right. But then these are the prerequisites as well. If you have no clue about what a Selenium web driver, how it works, the core Java automation frameworks, then it's a challenge team. Okay, Java, and we use JUnit initially, a little bit of test ng. Once you know code Java, JUnit and test ng is just another four or five hours of effort to get a good idea. It's not a complex thing at all. It's just a Java framework. So it should be pretty easy. Now, going back to that statement, the prerequisites is this, to be an ENIOT certified tester, you don't require any prerequisites team. You basically understand the concept of automation and how a framework does, that's fine. So not too many prerequisites when it comes to becoming a NEOT certified tester. You should just know how to use the NEOT app. That's what it is. If you know this, then that's good. To become an NEOT certified developer, oopsie, you will have to have Selenium WebDriver Java frameworks. This is a mandatory thing team because you need to know a code level operation of the framework. All right. Now, so this is the website which is primarily just giving a brief overview of what it could do and how it will really help in an agile development world to create some automation tests on the fly at a super speed. That's what we're talking about. While Selenium has something called as a Selenium IDE, which makes you know the record and playback of automation test runs easy, it still does not use the power of Selenium WebDriver, 
which can take things to a, uh, you know a different league altogether especially with frameworks cross browser testing grid level testing and so on any art combines them it kind of puts them together and again this is a product that i would all obviously love because uh, we've been building it but then feedbacks keep coming from our developers from our core engineers who are building this framework from our users testers and we are incorporating them as we build on so the maturity of a product is usually tested by the user base and the amount of usage that they have so we are very open minded when it comes to that let me quickly show you how the application looks um, at an app level very very briefly do note this is still under development so a lot of things are pending and broken but then it will give you a good glimpse this is the url you could all register there and i'm going to put it on chat for you all and play around with it it's a dev environment so it's not live it's not public once it is live then we will have a link out here on any yacht where users are able to uh, go to the application and start working so let me log in as a user there are no roles for a user it is primarily um, very simple it does not really say as to hey you're a tester or developer it's a single user single application testing we kept it very simple and lean so dashboard is coming soon that gives an overall view of what we have done but these are the four modules team that comes up test step setup sorry test setup run setup test run and test results so what are these four modules very briefly test setup is where a user comes in to enter details about an application that they interested to test and then they link modules to that application and then they link test cases to that module link test steps to that specific test case and they go about creating some reusable components with element map test data and high level keyword now how many of the participants have not attended rather you can say yes i attended or no we didn't attend the any odd certified tester training could be no please cause what do each of these forms do is what is very critical team and how are they placed so this is an agile development methodology that we using to develop this atomic 77 is the team which is helping to build this web based ui and i am working very closely with them along with some of our enyot core team members so looks like about 60 70% of you attended um, a few of you are here for maybe the first time so this should give you a brief idea all right when it comes to run setup which is not yet ready the user gets to choose from what this setup what they want to execute so you can choose that i want to execute a complete module or an xyz test case in a module what you want to do for that specific test run amazing feature when it comes to regression testing at a functional level next uh, test run is basically once we selected what we want to do the actual execution of the test where the application gets opened up on your local machine the browser gets navigated to the url the test cases test steps are performed and as the results come in you will start seeing those test results in the last tab these are the four modules team that come to it all right so this is any yacht um, app the core framework behind it is in our google drive that is where the entire team is collaborating and working on we have a lot of collaborators here um almost about 50 60 collaborators if you notice this and within this we placed our files so if i go to the final any yacht files and any yacht consolidated so various teams who worked on it finally merged to become one core team of about 15 members and we started to put everything in here so the code is very critical in this we've got different versions for the last 3 4 months that we've been working and we have come till the version 12 so this is the latest version that our team is working on 
each of these Java files will talk about what we are doing. Right from how we set up the test run, how we execute it and so on. So to become an Enyot certified developer, you need to know at a very ground level each and every piece of the code. What does it do? All right. What does each line of that code perform? What did I get here? Authorize. Okay. Notepad would like to. Okay. Love. There you go. Now, do note, team, we've been constantly also trying to, um, what do you call this, optimize the code and we're trying to improve how it performs overall. We have not yet done it. We are also putting comments and blocks of change controls wherever possible. And we will further continue to do the optimization as we go along and who has done which parts of the code and so on. So this is one of those files that you need to really go and master each and every line of this almost 500 lines of code. How does it work? Why is it been built this way and so on? Now, why would someone require to go at a code level and find out why it is working, how it is working? Why is it important when we have a good web-based UI which is helping us do the entire thing? Why do we still require something to know at a code level of this framework? The reason is very simple, team. Unlike the typical development world or the development methodology or SDLC, testing as a practice is extremely diverse and extremely varied across the industry. Various project teams, even within a single organization, approach testing in a different manner right from naming nomenclature documentation standards how they what tools they use for you know writing the test artifacts test cases test steps what they use to manage the testing process how they approach automation everything is very different while the core principle remains the same the flow could be different and the test Thing that is needed to automate any application lot of times requires customization so there will be a time when you need to go at a code level and change something and be able to take this source code and say hey let's make it the next version let's add something to it we want to keep any as an open source platform we want to keep it so that there are contributors coming from across the globe and trying to uh, provide inputs. Like we've got a lot of contributors uh, through ITL and so far, it will slowly open up. So that is why it becomes critical for us to know at a code level. So tomorrow someone would, could come and say, hey, you know what, instead of Excel, let's move to XML. And here is the code for it. So the whole thing becomes now different. We will talk about how we go about changing the utilities class where we have various things right from how we read and interact with an Excel or how we read and interact with any files that we work with and many other utility programs. So I believe in the screenshot functions and all that um, would be somewhere out here. So a lot of effort has been put into making sure that these codes work at a you know granular level. It is very tough when it comes to uh, writing a generic framework. When I say tough, we got to think through various pros and cons, various situations where a user uh, will face during the testing lifecycle and how the framework could handle that situation. And that is why each of these codes that we've done so far is being, um, you know, constantly worked on and improved. So the Enyot core team who's been helping to build this framework, what you're seeing on the screen, are the ones uh, who interact. We've taken almost like a couple of weeks off uh, before Christmas to the first week of Jan as, uh, you know, we wanted to do a lot of other celebrations with seeing of 2016 and so on. And now we're getting back to discuss what's next, what's next. And very interesting how we developed this team, right from talking about what are the features that we want to add how we're going to put the version control. And we've created something called as a task list for Enyot in which 
each and every core functionality that we want we're talking about is it currently done executed or are we trying to move it into the next version and so on and we constantly go about interacting and putting uh, new tasks so this is an ongoing current task list that talks about what has come what is yet to come and so on once you complete the in certified developer training you should be comfortable to create any framework that a client requires they may say you know once you join a new project they will come to you and say hey you know what thank you so much and your looks interesting but you know what it's not going to work for us we need something very customized we need something to be built from a ground level your response then should be absolutely let's go ahead do it tell me how we need to customize or what we need to do either we take any as a platform and customize or we start at a ground level and start coding and you are the one who could do it and that is what we're trying to do with this team so just for information to let you know that slowly as the need arises to become an any certified tester I may open this up to the entire world to know how the application works how to use it it, it doesn't really require a technical skill to be an any certified tester and I also believe that way we'll get a wider user base so we will again launch another any certified tester training and that we hopefully not yet a decision made will open it as a free thing for the entire world to actively participate so that is something that uh, we're excited about hopefully we'll start working on that as well all right team so uh, that's primarily what i wanted to show for today i wanted to talk about what in does i wanted to show you the website and the application under development briefly also the kind of uh, development that has been done by the team so far and how we've consolidated into a current version and what kind of a scope and potential we're looking for in your certified developer but do not team like i said the prerequisites are very strong if you're not comfortable when i say comfortable really comfortable with selenium web driver commands the ways and means of how it works and how automation frameworks are really working and what each of these uh, coding level uh, detail that you could do it is not going to be worth it right now to become an in your certified developer so for the jpac members who have gone through the selenium basic training then the selenium advanced training who have also seen the in your certified tester i believe are absolutely spot on fit for getting into the in your certified developer in fact, as part of this, I don't want to be the only main trainer. Uh, me and Manoj don't have to be. We have some amazing core team members who have helped develop this and they could come forward and start walking through each piece of code along with us. And that's going to be really interesting to you because I am so uh, proud and excited about the Enyot core team, which is about 15 people right now. With the JPAC, another 50 people getting added and we'll start reaching at least about 100 people by end of Jan through this whole program. Very proud of you all to have done this. Brilliant job. And do note team, Enyot is a team effort. It is not a single person, Karthik, Manoj or IT learn. It has been built with a vision in mind and we did kickstart with IT learn, but we hope it will grow big enough. All right, questions team. Karthik, can you please give me your contact number to talk? Okay. Um, sure, I can. The only reason, team, I hesitate sometimes to give my contact numbers openly is I get flooded with calls and I won't be able to do justice. So, Kosala, why don't you try and put the um, you know reference of what we want to discuss and then I would be happy to provide the number. Current industry, which one is most used, JUnit or TestNG? All right. Good question, Kushal. So number one, please note, JUnit or TestNG is used by whom? Can you guess, team? Who uses? Is it a test engineer or a developer who uses JUnit or TestNG primarily? Come on, everyone. 
there's nothing right or wrong. What you think is is fine. That's it. What you think is more than enough. All right. You know, good to see that there are equal answers. Test engineers. Some half of you are saying developers. Half of you are saying the test engineers. In fact, one interesting answer is J unit is by developers. Test engineers by testers. <laughs> All right. It is basically these are used for unit testing, both J unit and test engine, and they are used primarily by developers team. All right. So when the development is using, it is their call. Which is more popular in the industry? I can't really say because J unit is quicker, faster to get on and use it. Very simple. Some of them test engine's got a little bit more power for you know parallel threads, parallel test runs, and it's got some <clears throat> better. UI in terms of the defect reporting at the end, so test ng as well. So the answer is tough to say test ng or J unit. But here's my feeling: once you know one of them, it is very easy to get an idea about the other. And when you go into the market, don't say that I only know J unit, I don't know test ng or vice versa. Do not do that team because they will know that uh, you know what are you talking about will be the expression from there. You have to both say that I know both of them, but I've been more Working on let's say test ng or j unit doesn't matter. Uh, so for example, when we built Eniot by the core team, it was j unit we started with. Uh, then we went to Java a lot, and then now we moved to test ng because we needed to do some parallel threads, parallel test runs. Do I answer your question, Kushal? So it's it's a very tough question to answer because it's more from a development side. From a testing perspective, test ng could be more. Uh, significant but once you get to frameworks all of this will boil down to just core java all right this is a very heartening question team by one of the members and this is something i hear on a regular basis and thank you so much because i can now address this question to the entire audience this is what has been mentioned let me read it out team I have basic BSc, Bachelor of Science degree, no technical skills, and I work in library as a page sub. If I want to enter into IT field, which course is best for me to start? All right. So this is how much of passion or willingness the entire global audience is showing to get into IT industry. And the primary driver for IT industry team, if you look at it, is you get jobs locally where you are, good paying, decent work environment, and you know uh, it is also something that is long term that they can look at to retire with. That's why IT industry has become very popular. But at the same time, people have believed that to enter IT industry, you need to a no development coding and so on. The only other area which does not require any kind of a development and coding could be QA and that's an easy way for us to enter or migrate from a different industry into IT and for decades that went on. But then the testing as a practice matured over the last few decades and they started using test management tools that requires some bit of proficiency on how to use an application. Uh, like a, like a HPALM or which was quality center earlier and so on and then we started going more towards how do we automate tests and for that we required to learn from H, the initial mercury windrunner which became HPQTP and now UFT the VB scripting and that gave nightmare to many a few QA engineers across the globe and they had to to survive Today, it's gone even more denser. It's gone even more thicker in terms of what you need to be learning. And that is the primary reason. It is no longer about what you have as your background industry or your basic degree that you carry, but what you're willing to learn today that will get you into the IT industry in the right manner. Easy to learn just manual testing, but extremely tough to get a job through it. Tougher to learn automation testing, and it's a fact, but it'll make things easier for you to get into a job. 
if your end intent is to get into IT industry, my strongest advice to the individual who asked me that question is to go through um, Selenium as a training team. Selenium web driver with Java, JUnit, or it could be C Sharp, or it could be PHP, Python, Ruby on Rails, any programming language that it supports. That is what I would recommend. And team, this these kind of messages and you know uh, background I hear I used, I heard for last eight years, nine years in my career, and that has been something that has been driving me. How can I make someone who's not confident at all in where they are, where they've come from, to get to a next level? And that is something I think we've been successfully trying to do, and we'll continue to drive in that direction as IT learn as our overall motto of training. All right, can you repeat the course? Yes, it is Selenium with Java. Selenium web driver with Java. And the best way to start is go to my YouTube channel team. Just go to my YouTube channel. For those of the engineers or dreamers who are unable to afford a training program right now, there's plenty of free tutorials that I've put here. And this should give you a great start. So just go to um, some of our popular videos. We've got about 34,000 subscribers, almost six and a half million views on our YouTube channel. And we've got over 200, 300 videos out here. And all you should do is look at maybe most popular ones to down. And some of these basic trainings is more than enough to get started. Then you can look at how you could do um, what I would say as you know advanced training through us. All right. Okay. A few more questions. Let me see. Someone else was asking me something. Where is that question? Can someone say hello? Manoj, seven thirty. Um, there is another session that you have right, which is on Selenium Light project. You're welcome, Kosla. I don't know if Manoj maybe is out on a break. All right. Uh, so one more question. Hi, Karthik. I've been working as a QA analyst for the past five years, and now I want to learn automation. Okay, perfect. I have basic programming skills, but never written any scripts in my previous job. Is it going to be a challenge to, sell, to learn Selenium with Python? Learning Selenium with Python or C Sharp or Java is a cakewalk. And believe me on it. All you need to do is focus and go in the right manner. So let me ask the same question to JPACT. So team JPACT, you have learned Selenium in the last 45 days with us. And there was a perception about it before, like Shweta does right now. And has your perception changed that it is not that complex? You can learn it if you go step by step. Yes, no team. And again, I'm not saying we all can master it in two months. I'm saying you can get a great head start in the first 45 days. Then you can continue to build on it. In about six months time, you'll be an amazing automation expert. Definitely, yes, yes, I can. Yeah, yes, yes, we can learn. Yes, we have not mastered it yet, but we'll get there. See, that's the spirit. That's what I love. And I know each of you by name team, and I know it's your, most of you have not come from the IT industry or a technical background and so on. And still you could manage to do and get through this. And I feel very proud about very proud. And team, do note, we'll have some uh, tests that I'm going to put JPAC team uh, to be able to test our own skills, what we've learned. And Manoj and team are going to be helping me in creating them. And we'll do that. All right. Um, so Shweta, do you have any course coming up soon? I would like to do a hands-on project. Please let me know. Sure, Shweta, why don't you contact our sales team? We will guide you. Uh, in about a week's time, we'll be starting something new uh, as part of the JPAC itself. Maybe we'll start again from Selenium Basics and go on, depending on how uh, members are interested, what they want to learn, like batch A, batch B. So we'll let you know. But you should all watch for sure the JPAC orientation session video team. That is very important for you all to learn the same link that you use to register you'll find 
the orientation session videos. So I'm going to continue to take a few more questions. There was one gentleman who asked me another question. Ayrath Olovu. Uh, I also don't have any IT experience. I just concluded a six weeks QA manual testing training. Perfect. I just want to know if I'm in the right part in gaining experience in IT and also to be a successful tester. Ayrath, and I'm assuming that you've not done the manual testing program through IT and correct? And that is absolutely fine. Does not matter where. But I like said, like I said, manual testing by itself has competition. Not that you will not get a job, but you have a lot of competition. Why? Because for a manual testing position, it is just not manual testers who are applying team. There are also automation engineers who are applying. Because the pay that they're looking at to get started is fine. And then let's say the pay is like 40, 45 or 50 dollars an hour, and the candidates who are automation engineers ready to work as manual testers, then the recruiters have no big issue. Why not? We're getting more skill for the same rate. Let's hire an automation tester than a pure manual tester. That is where you need to scale up your skill into more technical things like uh, Selenium. So for those of you who have, uh, you know, first time kind of fear, do watch some of the free videos we have on this page, um, the same page you use to register. That will give you a great idea on how a JPAC program has been built. Okay, let's see. Do you have any course? Yeah, I've answered that. I was told there are recorded videos. I want to check with you. So, Sweta, here is what happens. At IT eLearn specifically, we emphasize a lot on recordings because there is a constant need for people to go back and repeat. Second, we have a global audience. So, while the timings that we put are more comfortable from a trainer's perspective, trainees come from various parts across the globe. UK, Australia, Europe, Middle East, China, Japan, Asia, India, over 45 countries team that we've got participants from. And that does not mean that it's a convenient time for global. So live training is good because it's a schedule, but most of our trainees come to join the videos. And every training batch, we have about 30, 40 people uh, on an average attending. So most of the questions are common. It's not like a one-on-one -on -one training where every trainee gets to speak and so on. When it comes to live projects, however, it is very interactive. It is the trainees who do the speaking, who do the presentation, who do the work, and we guide and we motivate and we give feedbacks as to what's right, wrong, and areas of improvement. All right, let's see a few more questions. So team, you, you get what we're doing here, right? While I'm doing the ENIOT, uh, there's still questions which are basic and I'm kind of going through them. I have no experience in IT, but I got trained in manual testing and UFT. What more do I need to learn to get a job in QA? I feel coding is pretty hard for me. So Sneha, coding cannot be hard. Then you've not learned UFT. You should learn coding. It is so simple. You're not trying to become a developer here. We're trying to become automation engineers. So if a developer requires 100 things to learn to be a good Java developer or a VB developer, as a tester, you just need 40, 45 things out of it. You don't need the whole nine yards. You're not trying to become a developer. So since you've already learned manual testing and UFT, I would recommend go back to UFT, continue to practice, and take that onto your profile and start working on it. Can I do Selenium without SQL experience? Of course, why not? Selenium has got nothing to do with SQL or any database. As you get to different levels of it, you will need to start learning uh, how the Java code can interact with databases and all that. That's just a plugin in R, so in R learning, and then you're good. Excuse me. I don't know anything about coding. <laughs> Is that will be easy to learn and you are certified developer. Uh, Minal, nope. Not yet. You have to learn coding. And I'm sure I think you're one of our JPAC recent joinees, right? Minal. So you need to start with the Selenium basic training, Selenium advanced training, and you are certified tester, then any you are certified developer. If you are someone who's gone through that, then you're ready for it. Or else, uh, just wait. It's no point in going and scaling yourself. I used to write this. What are the steps that are required to become a you know, good developer? And I used to talk about this here. See, this is what I write team. 
you know, the four step process to becoming a great, uh, you know, programmer. First and foremost thing team, people try and jump to writing their own code, big one. And that's a default uh, blunder we perform. You got to learn to read the code, just reading the code and understanding what it does. Then we got to start making some small changes to the code. Then editing the code with something larger, modifying, customizing. Then you're ready to write your own code from zero. And then you keep repeating this exercise. If any of you get to doing the step four or three at the beginning, then you'll have a lot of heartbreaks. You'll get disappointed and you'll give up. And that is the reason I try and make sure we focus in this manner. And this is how I motivate and my trainers motivate uh, the engineers to learn. So I do see a few hands also raised. If anyone wants to be unmuted, I can. So let me see if uh, Kushana, do you have a question? You can unmute at your end and speak up. Sneha, you also have your hand raised. Let me know if you have a question you want to speak about. There are questions here. Manoj, are you back? Hi, Karthik. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I was trying to check to see. I know there's a 7:30 p.m. schedule. That's for Selenium Live project. Is that correct? Yes, Karthik. And uh, it's on a different link, correct? Yeah, it's on different link. So even if we continue on this webinar for a few more minutes, it wouldn't interrupt us with that. Okay, cool. Sure, yeah. So you, uh, once you're ready, you can get started on that and I will join you on the Selenium Live project in a few minutes once I'm done here. Sure, right. Okay, so when is the JPACT going to start? Okay, JPACT is an ongoing thing team. When do you want to start is the point, not when is JPACT starting. JPACT is already starting. It is always will start every day. It will go on. You just have to get on to it. Do not wait for anything. It is happening on a daily basis. We are getting new JPACT registrants, almost three to four joining every week. And they're not looking at when is it starting. It is a new program that's starting every day. Like for example, Manoj started the web services training um, today. It was the day one. And that is how it will continue. So you are ready, join us. That's it. Any prerequisites you recommend for Selenium with Python? Uh, prerequisites. So nothing like a prerequisite. It's a complete program. Uh, at IT Learn, you could go, if you're looking at through IT Learn, look at our online courses. You will find a link specifically for Selenium with Python. And this also covers robot framework. So you can look at this option. There are a few free videos to get started, about four of them. You should get going with that and see if you're good to go on. And a lot of participants are common with this session and the Selenium Live project. So they are logging off. For the rest of you, a few questions I'll continue to handle. Do you have any question, session, discussion if I go for recorded videos? So yeah, good question. Not like a QA and a live session. We have the tech forum and so on um, that is pretty active use it with the questions and answers uh, but as and when needed as part of JPACT we can always have a Q&A uh, where your questions will continue to get addressed. Sure we could handle that. What else team? So here's the plan for any certified developer. So this is more like a orientation session. I really didn't get into the code level. I believe I'm not sure of the exact schedule but we will get that uh, soon. When is day one, day two and so on day one two so that we will communicate to your email team please do make sure you add us uh, the learn at itln.com email address to your uh, contact list so that way you don't get uh, anything going to spam or promotions all right everyone i'm good any final questions before i log out all right thank you everyone thank you so much uh, See you all soon as part of JPAC specific training or wish you all the best. Um, do not worry that you need to go through a training only to be successful. It just makes your overall learning experience easy 
uh, because otherwise it's a very lonely journey to go by yourself that's what we're trying to do here but the free content free videos also to learn from wish you all the best everyone and um, have a great 2017 thanks all bye now bye everyone thank you